Just north of the equator on the western coast of Africa, the Republic of Liberia boasts the last pristine rainforest in West Africa. More than 60% of this forest stands untouched by loggers. Environmental experts the world over credit this remarkable achievement to the man they call the father of Liberian conservation, Alexander Peel. We decided to focus on the decision makers, and that is the politicians, and we had to get them to realize that maintaining the wildlife and the habitat would be a good thing for the whole country. Before he entered public service, Alex Peel was already known in his country. He was a star goalie on the Liberian national soccer team. In 1977, Peel's popularity and warm personal style, together with his degrees in forestry and wildlife management, earned him the top post in Liberia's wildlife and national park section. A biodiversity hotspot is a place where there's an unusually large number of, of species that are unique to that region. And in Liberia, there is a very, very hot hotspot. If the Liberian forests don't achieve some significant conservation status, we will have lost uh, at least 25% of the biodiversity of Africa. In 1983, Peel proposed the creation of Sapo National Park, the only wilderness reserve in his country. Peel is a true wildlife champion. Throughout the 80s, he led the way for Liberian park and wildlife laws. But there were dark clouds on the horizon for Sapo and for all of Liberia. Christmas Day, 1989, a rebellion against President Samuel K. Doe erupted into a bloody civil war that threw the nation into turmoil. The rebels had taken uh, most of the areas surrounding Monrovia, and they had cut off electricity to the city. Um, when that happened, we knew that we were in for a long haul. In the first year of the conflict, fighting divided the country. Two opposing rebel forces were moving in on the capital city of Monrovia. By July, rebel soldiers were executing members of the civil service. Peel learned that his name was on a death list. After the beginning of the Liberian Civil War, some of us outside of the country became very concerned for Alex's safety. At the urging of conservationist colleagues from around the world, Peel and his family made hasty plans to flee for their lives. Peel and his children took refuge in a boarding school run by American missionaries. There he learned from co-workers that the forestry development offices had been looted, stranded, and homeless, Peel occupied himself by helping distribute relief food to refugees. He had all but given up hope for his family's safety when a call came from Charles Taylor, the general who had led the rebel takeover. There were a number of people here in the United States who are good friends of Alex, having worked with him for a long time. We got in touch with Taylor and made an appeal to release Alex and let him come out to this country. My environmental colleagues uh, had pressurized him to get me out. In a gesture that was part humanitarian, part public relations, Charles Taylor put Peel in contact with a conservation group who flew him and his family to the Ivory Coast. I did not expect him to have done this for me. And I just thought we worked together and that was it. And then I said, well, Lord, it is not only, these guys are not only conservationists, but they are uh, humanitarian as well. From his U.S. home in exile, Peel kept conservation efforts alive through daily contact with his associates in Liberia. When a ceasefire was declared in 1997, he and a team of experts were the first to return to Sapo. We arrived at Sapo Park in 1997, immediately after peace was restored. And the people who I had known, they were all excited to meet with us and were all happy to see one another alive they saw hope in us returning. Peel returned again in 1998. He worked without pay to rehabilitate Sapo and help refugee communities knit back the fabric of their lives. For me, it was a lifetime and a campaign I had started, unknown to myself, the kind of commitment I would have engaged myself in. But for me, later on, I realized that I was doing this not because of Alex Peel, but because of the future of the country. For outstanding environmental achievement in Africa, the year 2000 Goldman Environmental Prize is awarded to Alex Peel of Monrovia, Liberia.